Looks like we have a good number of people in. So welcome, firstly, to the session. And thanks so much for joining us tonight. My name is Reagan Connect, and I'll be hosting uh, your, the event this evening. Also joining us for Benko is Chris Seaton, CAD CAM product manager, and from Form Labs, Phil Carlino. I have a few housekeeping notes to review before we get started. Firstly, this webinar is being recorded and will be posted to the Benko Dental YouTube page by early next week. And secondly, we want to hear from you. If you have any questions during the presentation, please use the QA button at the bottom of your screen and type them in, and we'll take some time to answer them at the end. Now I'd like to introduce you to today's presenter, representing Align Technology, Dr. Susan McMahon. Dr. McMahon has devoted her professional career to the pursuit of advanced technologies in cosmetic and minimally invasive dentistry. She frequently lectures across the country on the topic and enjoys one of the largest cosmetic dental practices in Western Pennsylvania. Along with many awards and honors, she has also been voted by her peers as the top Pittsburgh dentist every year for over two decades. Without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. McMahon to get us started. Doctor. Thank you. So two years, up to two years ago, I was kind of a traditional analog dentist. I had a kind of a busy cosmetic practice. I went through the AACD accreditation and um, I was, I thought I was doing really well. I thought my practice was really chugging along, but we were doing things old school style. I was taking, um, impressions of everything. Um, we were doing a lot of alginate and silginate impressions. I was waxing everything up myself. I was making all my own provisional stents and um, doing all regular traditional dentistry. And I thought I would just keep doing that indefinitely. I really didn't have big plans to be jump on the technology wagon. I know lots of people were talking about it and I thought it was sort of interesting, but I was always thinking, I'm fine. I, I, don't, I don't need to, um, I don't really need to change things. Do I need to invest in that? And like, do I want to? Do I wanna kind of have to learn all that new stuff? But people were starting to ask me things. Like I was having patients come in and say, like, do I really need an impression? My wife just got a crown done in, in an hour from her doctor. And um, I found myself thinking, why aren't I doing that? Um, why aren't I scanning? Why am I still taking impressions? So I started to, um, started to acquire things and started to learn and found that it has made such a difference in my practice. Uh, we're, we're doing lots of digital, lots of technology in our practice now. And not only am I still doing all the cosmetics that I love, I find myself doing other things that I really love. It's sort of invigorated me. It's invigorated my practice and it's hit our bottom line probably by 35%. And even in light of the COVID situation, we're having um, my best year ever this year. So I want to take a look at how I incorporated it into my practice and just how digital incorporating technology in your practice can make you grow in ways you didn't even realize and um, can, how you can get your team on board to do it with you. So when we look at the digital workflow multipliers, I think it all sort of starts with scanning for me. So the first thing I bought in my practice was an iTero scanner. And um, I, I actually have two scanners in my office now. I have um, this iTero and I have another one that I, I probably use a lot less than my iTero scanner but it was the beginning point for us. And I found that you really can use it in three ways. We are scanning every patient that comes to our office now. That's part of our initial um, intake in our office. And um, we'll talk a little bit more about how that happens and what that does for my practice. But when we scan those people, we can use it for diagnosis, record keeping and treatment accept, um, acceptance. So we bring them into the operatory. We talk a little bit about what they want. We take photos in our office and then we scan everybody. And that allows us to um, do major diagnosis, do comprehensive diagnosis. It records all of the things that we normally would have done in a chart. We would have gone in and recorded every existing restoration, every missing tooth, every recession, how the bite is. And it would have all been in words and kind of diagrams in a chart. And now we have it in a 3D representation that's more thorough than I could have ever done in a chart. And it allows me to sit next to the patient and have them look at it with me. And that's increased treatment acceptance 
incredibly in our office. It's so much better than having a patient try to lie back and look at a mirror or describe in words to somebody what you wanna do. You sit, we sit them up, we have the screen next to them. The whole time we're scanning them, they're craning their necks, trying to look at it, trying to touch it. And, and then we can show them exactly what we mean. You have a fracture on this tooth, you have crowding here. Um, it, 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 it's jumping our treatment acceptance. And my hygienists and assistants love it because it's far less work for them. It's replaced something they used to do. All that charting, all that, all that writing, me dictating it off to them. Me like, uh, did you get that? Did you hear that? Are you keeping up with me? So there's no more of that. And that's, that makes everybody happy. So once we have this record on everybody, the next step that we find is that you can direct outsource things. So we can take this scan and we can directly get production from it. We can do aligners from it. We can do smile design from it. We could do surgical guides. We could do occlusal guards. We could do perio trays. There's a lot of things that come directly off that scan that we can immediately bill for without another appointment for patients. So we're treatment planning, we're getting case acceptance, and then not saying we'll come back in two weeks and we'll take impressions and we can move forward on that. We have everything we need. Let's get moving on it. You come back in a week and we're going to have it in your mouth. And the third thing that um, I've been pretty excited about and really enjoy the most, I think, is my in-office production. So now we can use the scanner to produce things directly in our office, either through milling or 3D printing. And that's what we're going to take a look at today. Ooh, animation. So when we do new patient intake, I think the very most important thing is to have this replace something we used to do. In order to get our team on board, we had to make this easier instead of harder. It couldn't just be like one more thing to put on your new patient exam. Now, not only do you have to talk to the patient, take photographs on the patient, build a relationship with them, um, do all their charting. The only thing we still do is certainly perio charting. So we are still doing a perio chart on everybody, but we're no longer dictating off all of the existing restorations. We have a very good record of all of the um, mucogingival line everywhere. We can show inflammation, we can show calculus and tartar. And now with that new 5D, we can actually use it for caries detection, which is pretty awesome as well. So we implemented it as the next logical step and it allows my team to talk about things they hadn't talked about before, like occlusal guards, you can show wear on teeth, you can time lapse on existing patients, scan six months, scan six months later, and you can show them the difference. And that's a very powerful tool when we're, when we're, when we're um, offering treatment like occlusal guards and um, aligner therapy. And because our, our team is um, production their, their income is related to production. This is something that they absolutely love. So quick look at diagnosis and record keeping. This is the new 5D iTero. So there's a caries indicator. There's a caries detection on it. So you do a regular scan. You have to do nothing else different. And then there's a, a part of it that allows you to simply drag this little, um, little uh, looking glass over the occlusal edges and you can see interproximal caries. So does this replace radiographs? No, it does not replace them, but it, um, it lets us take fewer radiographs and that's good for patients and patients love that and especially parents of patients love that too, that they're getting less ionizing radiation. But it allows us to show patients right there um, in real time what's going on in their mouths. The other thing um, that I really like about that is that um, it allows patients to, um, to be sort of blown away by the technology. Let's take a quick peek at this. Tonight, I wanna come clean. <laughs> Seriously, I wanna come clean. I don't have a lot of vices, okay? I don't drink, I don't jewel, I don't go to hookah lounges. <laughs> I know I look like I do, but I don't. <laughs> but I am an addict and I am addicted to Amazon, which I know doesn't sound crazy as far as addictions go. Amazon Prime was my first taste of the white horse, but then I leveled up to the hard pit, which is Prime Now. Does anyone here have Prime Now? Okay, you know what I'm talking about. For $119 a year, 
You click on what you want, and within two hours, a sweaty Ukrainian man shows up at your door <laughs> with toothpicks, diapers, three bell peppers, and a Yoda costume for your dog. How do you say no to that? Convenience is the commodity that matters most to all. Yikes, sorry. Tonight, I want to come clean. Seriously, I want to come clean. I don't have a lot of... There we go. Of course. But then I leveled up to the hard pit, which is Prime Now. Does anyone here have Prime Now? Okay, you know what I'm talking about. For $119 a year, you click on what you want, and within two hours, a sweaty Ukrainian man shows up at your door <laughs> with toothpicks, diapers, three bell peppers, and a Yoda costume for your dog. How do you say no to that? Convenience is the commodity that matters most to our generation. I can't believe I used to physically go to stores, take money out of my pocket and pay for stuff like a peasant. <laughs> With Amazon, I just do this, mm. and things come to me like I'm an emperor. These are, this is what our patients expect. They no longer are willing to wait for things. They expect immediate, they expect convenience, and they expect technology. So if we're still in our chairs with our mirrors and explorers kind of walking around, talking about, um, talking about fillings or talking about decay and trying to share them on bite wings, they are, we're really, really pretty far behind the eight ball. Um, what I find is things like this. This is a patient posted this in our office. So we did the iTero scan like we do on everybody. And she asked me if she could shoot a video. So I shot a little quick video for her, put on the caries detection, sort of dragged it through. And she immediately posted it to her Instagram story, tagged us, that's my Instagram, Smiles in the City, and tagged us with this like, wow, bouncing back and forth and a happy tooth. So this particular girl, has about 1,100 followers. So what that means is she's out there telling 1,100 potential patients that we've got something really cool in our office and she was excited about it. And my hope is that they are going to then jump on our site to Smiles in the City and kind of cruise through what I have on my Instagram. And if they're interested in the things that I do, the kind of dentistry that I do, that perhaps they're gonna to come to me. It's 100% free and it is the fastest way to grow your practice. And um, we do it through technology. We ask them to share technology. Like if anybody that says, wow, that's really cool. I've got an, a hygienist that's like, yeah, people are always putting that on their Instagram. So we plant the seed and then they're like, oh, really? And yeah, do you want me to, do you want me to shoot a little video and you could put it on there? And we really help them along. But the key is to get them to do it on their phone and to post it on their sites and then tag us back to back. Um, this same girl, the same patient you see, we have a lot of big murals in our office um, that we encourage people to, to also um, shoot pictures of and post on Instagram and other social media. So this is just a big painting that's in our hygiene wow. room. And if you stand in just the right place, Ooh, you can a see a bird that looks, that looks like looks like she's uh, sitting on her head and people post this all the time too. And, and we encourage it, them to post us on their stuff and post the pictures on their stuff and then tag us back. And that's been super effective for us. So that's one aspect. You can diagnose better. You can um, get better treatment acceptance and you can encourage people to be wowed by your technology and post about it on their social media. And perhaps you're gonna get patients from that. Perhaps people are gonna see it and think, oh, that's a cool dentist, I wanna go there. That, why isn't my dentist doing those things? Then the direct outsourcing, of course, is um, clear aligner therapies, perio trays, smile design. Those we take those models, you take the scans that we did, send them directly out to these companies and get production from that. But I would like to focus a little bit more on kind of our millennials and their, their expectation of getting things right away because we have to, um, we really have to if you'll if you will cater to patients like that because they're what's driving all new business for us they are what um, is making our practices not just survive during these times not just even like kind of hang on but they're really making it thrive 
Are millennials spoiled babies? Do millennials stink? Millennials have it too easy. Millennials are the absolute cheapest. Now, half a cent strip. They are ruining Halloween. They're the thin skin generation. Millennials. 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 Blame it on the millennials. For sure, right? But because of that, people, it's not just millennials, it is pervasive in our society, but they're driving it. Um, they want things right away. They don't want to wait for things. And offering convenience to patient is to patients is absolutely the way to make your practice thrive. So um, production in office is what I'm pretty excited about. So we have a mill in our office and we do same day crowns. Um, we do mostly same day single units, starting to do a little bit more than that. My bigger cases, I still use a ceramist for, but we're also um, have a 3D printer in there. And um, that's, I kind of am most excited about our 3D printer because we are able to to um, produce things, manufacture things that used to take a week or two weeks to come back from a lab. I now have them overnight. Sometimes I can have them same day and I can move treatment along so much faster. So this was my 3D printer. And I, and I gotta tell you, I was like a little, um, you know, I've seen 3D printers out in meetings. I was at the IDS a couple of years ago and there were printers everywhere and I thought they were super cool, but I'm not like a huge technology person. I'm, I think I'm a, like, I think I'm a good dentist. I think I'm a very good clinician, but technology was not like something I was living and dying for. When I go home, I'm not playing video games or anything like that. And when I had to hook up my TVs to my um, fire sticks, you know, it took me like two months to get around to doing it because I didn't want to deal with it. But when I got this in the, when this printer was shipped to me, it came with all these boxes and I was like, oh geez. And uh, yeah, it took me only like an hour to put it together. Um, and I did it myself, all by myself. So here it is in my office. This is kind of our setup. We've got our mill, we've got an oven, we've got the design computer, we've got our printer and then the wash station and the cure station. And um, this is in a hallway where patients walk. And we always encourage them to go back and look at this stuff. Anytime it's running, I want them to come back and see it. And I want them to shoot video of it if they're interested in it. And I certainly want them to talk about it. So not hidden away. It's really clean and sleek looking and it doesn't take up much space at all. I'm in, a, I'm in the city in Pittsburgh. I'm in about, um, about, about 1200 square feet. So we are tightly packed in there, five operatories. And um, there's not like, it's like tiny houses in our office. Everything is really um, efficient, if you will. But this is something I want to showcase. So about an hour, I got it all hooked up and ready to go. A little bit of learning curve as with every piece of technology. You know, every time we do some, every time we change, we have to learn about it. But um, I found this one pretty easy to get going with. It was pretty simple. So we're using this for a couple of things pretty regularly now. And um, one of them, we've really boosted our production up is occlusal guards. And I've always done a decent amount of occlusal guards, but um, now my assistants and my hygienists are really looking for these. So you, you see here, we're scanning on the Itero. And then we have, you know, if you were gonna make a guard in your office, you basically had two choices, before I only had the Drufamat. So I would take an impression and then make it on the Drufamat. And here you can see them right next to each other. Or we're going to use that scan, design it on some design software and then print it right out in our printer. So old school, you know, I'm taking an impression, we're pouring it up and then we're sucking down the material on the Drufamat or a vacuum form machine. And then we're gonna cut it out and polish it. And that whole process, it's always pretty interesting. Like my, I have always, I have uh, two hygienists and two assistants. And my, out of them, I have two that are good at taking impressions and two that are just terrible at it. And um, oftentimes impression taking is very stressful for assistants. Patients of course hate it. And um, it is, it's something I don't miss doing at all in the office. With a scan, anybody can take a good scan. It's it, it, with that Itero, it's super intuitive. Um, you can learn really quickly how to do it and um, you can level the playing field, if you will. So everybody in the office has the same ability to take a very good scan the way you need it. 
So other option is to scan it. And here you see a patient right after her scan being right up, touching the itero, like they wanna sit up, they wanna to touch it, they wanna see what it is. It's very easy to show them a reason why they might need an occlusal guard or something else. Old school, we're gonna put it in that Drufa mat, we're gonna vacuum form some material down on it, and then we've gotta cut it out. And the cut it out part was the worst, right? And um, we do it on a slow speed hand piece on a nose cone, and then cut it out of the studio, and then polish it up, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. So we were delivering occlusal guards in about a week to people. So if you needed one, we would take, we would diagnose it. Sometimes they would say, yep, you can take an impression today. Other times they were scheduling to come back. So that's another chair time, another whole infectious disease control situation. And then a week after that, we were delivering their guard. If we use the scanning method, if we're doing it digitally, we simply scan it, we design it, and then we load it up onto our um, preform, which is the software that you use to um, get your design ready to go into the printer. It basically builds those little um, supports on it so that the printer jets can work the way they're supposed to. Pretty intuitive. I, I really have my least technological person in my office now able to do that. So that's pretty good. Then you just get the printer ready. Lots of words that were foreign to me, the platform, you know, all the materials, that sort of thing. But uh, really it was pretty an easy, easy learning curve. And then fire it and it's going to print. That's showing a bunch of guards made together. Here's our guard out of the printer. Um, I, I really like the material. It's a beautiful, clear material. You cut it off those supports. You polish it up just a little bit and there it is in the mouth. So less than 24 hours, it's inside the patient's mouth. So very, um, very quick delivery, very convenient. And I'm sure you could do it quicker than that if, if you so desired. Lots of occlusal guards being made in our office. I wanna talk about um, how in general, digital diagnosis can really help you do cases that you might not have done before. You, it helps get patients to acceptance and it can level the playing field a little bit, if you will. So if you're a dentist that's been out there practicing 25 years and is really comfortable doing lots of complex bite design, occlusal patterns, um, smile design, awesome. And if you're a dentist that's been out there five years, that's you know, still learning, that's still uh, gaining those skills, with a little help from our digital friends, we can both get um, this, a, a very similar outcome and we can do it confidently and we can keep our patients in house. And I, I find that's, the, um, that's been the big difference for me is keeping our patients in house. So let's take a look at this case. Um, I get a lot of crazy cosmetic cases. Um, people come to me for smile consults, like consults, that's typically how they enter my practice. So this guy, is 17 years old and lost on his right side, first by canine lateral. He had an impacted canine and when they uncovered it and tried to pull it down orthodontically, he ended up with bone defects on his lateral incisor and his bicuspid and they extracted all three teeth. And this is before I met him. He was going to a general, uh, his, his general dentist and he had been walking around like this for quite some time. And the general dentist had sent him to a periodontist to try to see if he could have implants there. And, you know, he sort of got lost. He sort of went to the periodontist and then didn't get back to the general dentist and he started doing his normal stuff. And all of a sudden his parents were like, wait a minute, we've got to get this fixed. And um, they just were, um, you know, in the wind, if you will. And they called us up and came to our office and asked us to take a look at this because I think they were, they needed someone to quarterback the whole procedure, if you will. They needed someone to be um, in charge of the whole thing and get him from start to finish in a sequential way. 
So we take a look at him and, you know, I know his teeth are really dirty. Um, and it's not because I think this guy is inherently doesn't have oral hygiene um, training or, or things like that. I think he was just embarrassed by his teeth. He was without teeth for a long time. He was kind of hiding them. And he, he had a hard time looking at his own teeth because they were, he was missing these teeth. But this is a difficult case. I think we've got him, when we look at that, his ridge had been augmented by the first periodontist a little bit, but he was a class three occlusion. You see, um, this is a difficult cause, this is a difficult uh, restorative case for anybody, whether you're a new dentist or you've been in it a long time. He's 17 years old, he's missing teeth, he's got a class three malocclusion, and he's got hygiene issues. So this is like, this is no joke, right? But what do we do with somebody like this? Um, if you're like regular analog dentist, you don't have a lot of technology in your office, you're doing what his dentist did, exactly what his dentist did. You're saying, go see this periodontist and see if he can put implants in there, which is just, you know, very out there. You have no idea what the outcome is. But if we decide to do this the other way, if we're taking a scan of this, and so we take in, in our office, we take a seat, um, excuse me, a um, digital scan on our iTero, and then we're taking a CT scan as well. And you don't have to have a CT scanner in your office. Certainly there's plenty of them around where you are that you could get send him for a CT scan somewhere else, I would think. But we have a CT scanner in our office. And we're able to take this information and marry it together. So we take his CT scan and we take his iTero scan and I send this off to my imaging company and I'm using 360 imaging for this. So it's a quick email of both of those things off to the imaging company. And then I jump on my phone or wherever I am or my computer in the office and I have a little meeting with the people at 360 Imaging, with the person that's gonna put the implants in because I don't place the implants myself. Um, we send to a periodontist and we just recently got someone in our office to put implants in, which has been even better. So um, we're all on the phone together. I'm as the restorative doctor. We've got the people at 360 Imaging and they've got a prosthodontist working on it there. And I've got the person that's gonna put the implants in and together we're gonna discuss what the best case scenario for this is. And this is all happening 15 minutes after he's left or sometimes while he's still in the chair, we can make this happen. So we're examining where we want these implants, what's the best case scenario, we know what brand we're going to use, we're looking at it all the different ways, and we're marrying it with that iTero scan. So I know where I want those restorations to be from a smile design standpoint and from a functional standpoint with that class three occlusion. And when we take that information, our digital information, um, and marry it together, we then know what size implants are gonna fit in the bone, what length implants, and exact position of these implants. So it gives anybody a lot of confidence to place the implants and to restore them. Because once we've made all these decisions, it's very simple from here on in. There's not a lot of decision making. It's just really, um, really straightforward. And um, you don't need to have um, a huge knowledge of how to um, how to read CT scans, how to place implants, how to what the whole library of implants. You can get help with this. The people at the the imaging company can help, and the people that are placing the implants can help. And when you work as a team, you do what you're good at, which is the restorative end of things, or what I'm good at. That's the restorative end of things, and we let the other people do what they're good at. So then we, I know I want screw retained. So we're able to um, figure out exactly where the screws are gonna go, if they're gonna work in his bone, where the occlusion is. I know in this case, he needs a little bit of a bone graft on the facial of this implant. You can see it there. So we know when we put him in, we're gonna graft a little bit there. And then 360 Imaging makes me a design file. They make me a, a guide file. So we've planned the whole guide and it comes to me via email very quickly and then I can print it. So this is all happening at one time. So this poor kid's been out in the wind for months and months and months, probably like eight months with nothing going on. And they come to an office that's digitally capable and I'm able to say to them that same day, I can put, we can put implants in there. Here's how we're gonna restore them. Here's what my fees are. And 
the surgeon's fees, I'm going to have you see him later if we're not, if he's not in my office, I'm going to have you go see him tomorrow. And we're able to get a down payment right then and there and move forward with treatment. So not only do you, I'm going to put three implants in there. I'm going to know right where to put them. And we know what the fees are going to be in your surgeries in three days, instead of go out and see the surgeon, wait for an appointment, surgeon sees them, you're not around, you're not talking to the surgeon. Sometimes um, sometimes without fully guided situations like this, the surgeon's putting the implants where he thinks the bone is. We've all heard that. I had to put it where the bone was. And you get back implants that are really difficult to restore. And that makes us hesitant to do it, right? I don't wanna get involved with a case like that because it's hard. This kind of makes it easy. So they send back a file for us. And then we put that file, load it right up into our preform, which is you know, the, um, the software that helps us design these anchors or design these supports. We load it up onto that and then we just print it. Um, so there's the guide being printed in the office. Um, on the left side, it's on my platform. Um, then it's taken off, cut off are not cut off, we just pop it off, cut those little supports off. Um, we put it through a wash and then it gets through a cure. And then we have a, a product there, breaking it right off the supports. We can purchase guide sleeves from whatever implant company you're using. So these guide sleeves fit right into this designed guide and that allows the, the um, surgeon or whoever's placing them to put the drills um, exactly in the right orientation and only to the right depth. So it only allows, uh, allows an exact placement. So we print it, we cure it, we finish it, we assemble it, and then we autoclave it. So you clean it before you take it to the patient. So here's this guy's surgery. We're ready to go. He's got three implant sleeves in there on this guide that we've printed in our office. Consultation to surgery is a couple of days. We're using the guide with the um, calibers in there, drilling the holes, putting the implants in. There they are, suturing them up, allow him to heal for a while. Um, but the other thing I'm able to do from this design is I ask 360 to send me the file for this model of my prototype. This is the prototype of where I want the restorative to be. So they send me this model and I take the model and I use my Drew from and just suck down a um, Essex material on it. And now I have a provisional too. So I have gone from a very little time in my office from a scan and a consultation. Um, I've been able to take that and, and fabricate things in our office that are billable and that allow me to do these complex cases pretty confidently and pretty easily. Here he is, finished. So um, we're able to, able to uh, do things that we weren't able to do before. Um, the other thing that I'm pretty excited about with this, this um, new software, the Preform software, is that now I can take scans on my iTero and, um, and print models from that very, very quickly. So we're using that for smile design as well. I used to do a lot, um, would take Sildenate, Alginate impressions, and then I would cut out the, uh, cut out the whatever I needed to with a handpiece, do wax up smile designs, and then I'd make surgical st or stents from that, provisional stents and prep guides from that. And now um, we can take these models, do a little smile design on the model if we want to, and then print that model right out. And that's taking a lot of, um, a lot of the kind of um, lab bench work that I used to do out of my hands but it's still my input in there. So I'm still designing the way I want. I'm making them look the way I want and at the same time getting these results that I, I would like to have. So if we look at the way this will multiply across your practice, what can we do with, uh, what, what, what is the thing that's gonna make it multiply in your practice? We're gonna diagnose better, we're gonna record keep better and we're gonna get treatment acceptance. 
people are um, craning their necks, like I said, to look at what we're doing and they're, they're much more willing and able to do it. Direct outsourcing, taking those scans, sending them right out for aligners, right out for perio trays, right out for occlusal guards. And these are the things that I see my assistants and hygienists really focused on. These three things, aligners, perio trays, and occlusal guards. And I'm sure many of you have heard since um, COVID that aligners, clear aligners have been through the roof. I've actually started 10 cases of clear aligners in the last three months, which is a big number in my office. We, we, normally, don't, we normally don't do that money. We might do one one case a month, and we're doing three cases a month now. Um, people are more excited about it. Um, they feel because they're wearing masks, they can wear those. They're, they're, they are want to emerge from their cocoon, if you will. Um, their pupa, all metamorphosed. But um, my staff is looking for these more and more. And when people see their teeth malaligned on that screen, it really speaks to them. So because we've kind of hooked production and compensation in our office, they're looking to sell, I hate to use that word, they're looking to diagnose these cases. Um, perio trays we're using on um, anybody that has any significant work done, we try to put them in perio trays because we wanna keep their tissue as healthy as possible. But those perio trays deliver low dose hydrogen peroxide. And that's also been shown to be very effective um, keeping the mouth, the oral bacteria really low and killing COVID virus. So we've got people that are coming asking for that. And our hygienists are talking about that a little bit more. And we're, and we're seeing a lot more perio trays being made. And then of course, occlusal guards, um, people are stressing their teeth a lot, right? We see that time and time again. And anytime we put expensive work in their mouth, I like to put them in guards too. I feel like we've got their occlusion in a great place. I feel like they're, um, I feel like I'm very confident that they're not going to be breaking their teeth from occlusal stresses, but like it's belts and suspenders for me. I still want them in occlusal guards. I still want them to be wearing them at night. Um, and just the general population that doesn't even have cosmetic work done, that has so much stress in their lives, that we're seeing so much TMJ issues and so much wear on their teeth, abfraction lesions. There's a lot of people out there that we can diagnose with the occlusal guards. And then finally, um, probably the thing that is the most effective in increasing our bottom line, and probably the biggest reason to think about be, making your office fully digital is, is that in-office production, that you are no longer um, just sending things out to labs and waiting for them. It brings all the control to you. It's very, very simple. Um, I know that mills are very expensive and committing to a mill can you, you really have to kind of like work it into your workflow and make sure that um, it's right for your practice. Um, 3D printers are almost a no brainer, I think these days, because you can not only be more economical with making these things, but you can do it faster and faster is so important. I am, um, oh, we're, we're just, a little bit early, so great. We have some time for some questions, but um, this is my contact information. I'm always happy to hear from any of you. I'd love to hear from any of you if you got cases you want to discuss, or um, you have any anything you'd like to ask me or any comments. Please do. Please follow me at Smiles in the City. I have. Um, I sometimes post cases before and after on there. Sometimes new technology. My other lectures you probably can find at Catapult Education. That's my speakers group, and then. Um, um, Smirk Box Online is a new um, subscription for, it's a subscription, seasonal subscription box for people that are in the dental industry, smile enthusiasts. So that's our new project that we're pretty excited about too. And take a look at that if you'd like to. Can, uh, do you have any questions for me, Reagan? Do you have anything out there? Yeah, definitely. We have a few questions in here. Uh, so the first question is, for record keeping purposes, does the iTero element to record real video scan or only animation slash cast view, or is it only available with the advanced version of iTero? Um, who would like to answer that? Would someone like to answer that? Or would you like me to answer that? We have Chris on. Yeah. Mark around. Um, the iTero does capture raw data. 
Um, you know, it's color in stone. It's also capturing inner, inner oral images as well. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Uh, next question. What has your staff been saying about using this technology? Have they been turned off from it? And what is the learning curve of your staff for this, for something like this? I know this is always the question, right? So in my staff and every staff I've ever, ever been around, there's always someone that's super techie and that's excited about it. And that's kind of pushing you. We need this. We need this. We need this. We got to get it. And then there's the other end of the spectrum, the people that um, are really hesitant and feel overwhelmed by any change, any overwhelmed by technology. Sometimes if I bring a new adhesive system into the office, I have one person that's overwhelmed by it, like, oh, I just can't, you know, I can't figure it out. But um, I think the key to it is, um, is to do it maybe one at a time. Like I think it's important to get a scanner in first and then maybe, um, maybe a printer, then the mill, or you could probably do like a scanner printer together or a scanner mill together, but you don't want to overwhelm them all at once. And you want to make sure the key without a doubt is to make sure that they're comfortable on the scanner. So as soon as um, we got the scanner, we had multiple training um, sessions and I set aside time it would take two hours in the afternoon and everyone learned to scan in my office. So all the hygienists and all the assistants learned how to scan and they scanned on each other. And like I said, we tied it, the production to compensation and that was a huge motivator for them. But um, like, I, like I said, I have two scanners in my office and one, I think the Itero is very intuitive and easy to use. The other scanner is just a little more complex. And um, sometimes I use that, like that's in my restorative room for my bigger, like full mouth cases, I'll use that, but I rarely go to it. Um, I've been using the Itero for most of my stuff now. It's certainly in every diagnosis and it's um, it's for our single units these days and it's it's for these um, we're using it for these occlusal guards and for our surgical stents too. So the key is I know they're going to be overwhelmed. Sometimes I'm overwhelmed and I didn't want to do it but um, jumping in but in a supportive way and you need you need some uh, support from these companies sometimes because um, and, and they're great. Um, we, you know, we get them on, we'll get them in a Zoom like this and they'll, you have to use it for a little while. So we got some training, then you use it for a little while and you find like, oh, I don't know how to do this or I don't know what this is for. Um, and we then get on a Zoom meeting with a trainer and work out those little kinks and move from there. But um, once we got past the scanning, the rest of it was pretty easy. It was not difficult at all to move forward. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, next question. Do you find the use of Optrigate, Optrigate or similar products help expedite scan time? Um, I hate to admit it, but I have never been successful with the Optrigate. I love Ivoclar. I love a ton of their stuff, but I can't make that thing work. Um, it always pops out when I use it. So um, I do use some other cheap retractors and they definitely help. And I know people that are really successful with Optigate. Um, I, I like one called the Comfort View by Premier. It's autoclavable. Um, it pops in really easily and you can autoclave it. And um, Ultradent has a new one out called the Umbrella, which is a disposable one, which also works great. And I'm going to try the Optigate again. I'm, I'm going to make, I'm going to try it this week again. <laughs> All right. Next question. Who is doing the majority of the scanning and printing in your office and how does that workflow look? Um, so everyone gets scanned, every patient gets scanned when they come in. So we have a baseline for everybody. Um, so my hygienists are, we, people enter our practice two ways. They come in via smile consult, and that means they're in an hour in my chair, first with my patient care coordinator and then my assistant. So my assistant is doing the scanning on those patients. So my patient care coordinator has the relationship with them on the phone brings them back, talks a little bit about what they have in mind, um, takes some photographs with a 35 millimeter camera on them, and then introduces, then usually brings me the bullet, this is what's going on. I might pop in and say hello, order radiographs, and then also tell them we're gonna scan them. So then my assistant will do that scanning. The other way people come to our office is the traditional way through hygiene. So they have an hour and a half new patient appointment, the hygienist greets them. They really are not coming for any major smile needs. So they're, they're, it's almost the same situation. We don't take as many photographs with them. And so my hygienist is doing that scan, but we have the eye 
record on all of these people. And then from there, we move to the next step. So if we're gonna do an in-office production of printing, um, I've already got the scan there. Um, typically, um, we'll take that scan and send it off to um, get the design done and have it come back. And I'm the one that's on the preform. takes me two minutes to do it. I have another assistant that's only with us on Mondays who's amazing at it and she can do it too. But I think you, you typically find that there's one assistant that's good at that, as long as you've got that library of scans on all your patients. Awesome. Great. Uh, next question. What design software do you use? We use a couple of companies to help us out. We use um, Full Contour and we use 360 Design and we've been um, using a little bit of ExoCAD. Awesome, great. And I think we have a few uh, technical questions in here that our CAD CAM specialist is going to type out for you guys to see. Um, I'm going to try to pronounce some of these words in the next question, so bear with me. Uh, can you please discuss removable prosthesis fabrication steps with scanning? Are you able to answer that question, Dr. McMahon, or do we want to call up a product expert? Why don't I do the best I can, and then okay. he can come and do the technical. So say that question again for me. Yep. Can you please discuss about removable prosthesis fabrication steps with scanning? Removable prosthesis. prosthesis fabrication steps with scanning. Yes. So if we're talking about a removable prosthesis like uh, an occlusal guard or a surgical stent or maybe a flipper even um, with scanning. So um, as a, traditionally you take impressions you'd pour impressions up and you possibly would send those out to a lab, right? Um, because you don't have the ability to fabricate that in your office. Or if you do, it's sitting on your lab bench for, for in my case, a couple of days. And then an assistant is doing that work, sucking it down on a vacuum former, cutting it out um, and, and working it that way. If we're gonna do it digitally, you are scanning the patient upper and lower in a bite. And um, you're, if, you're using an, if you're using the scanner, you're trying to get um, all of the teeth really well and a little bit of gingiva around it. So you're doing a fast scan upper and lower, and then you're going back and filling in. So then you're you know, hitting the fill button, seeing where you've missed and gone back and filling in. So that's what makes it pretty doable for anybody that any chair side person can really do it. That scan, if you have ExoCAD or another design software in your office and you're, and you're good at it and you like doing that, you would take that scan, upload it into your ExoCAD, you would design whatever you're going to make, then from ExoCAD, it moves to Preform. So ExoCAD's design software. Then it moves to Preform, which is the software that's affiliated with the printer that um, puts those supports on it and aligns it on the platform for you. Um, that just takes a couple of minutes. Design in ExoCAD might take 15 minutes, might take 10 minutes. I have a buddy that can do it in like four minutes but you know, he's always super competitive and trying to do things faster than everybody <laughs> else. Um, so ExoCAD to preform, maybe two or three minutes to get it on the right level of the platform and the supports on it. And then hit, you know, you're hitting a button, you're sending it to the printer, which in our case is right next door, um, but you can do that on your laptop from anywhere. And um, you can nest them together and do multiple things at the same time. So if you had five occlusal guards, you might design them all and then put them all in pre-form, pre um, nest them all in the same thing and print them all at the same time at night while you were gone. Or if you're doing one like I did in that particular case, I'm doing it while I'm there because I want to put the sleeves in there before I left that night. I was sending that guide to the surgeon the next morning goes to the printer and someone can help me out with a printer, how long that's probably gonna take, like maybe an hour and a half to print something like that. Phil, are you able to answer that question or Chris? Takes a little while, he'll come back on. It takes a little while to print that. So it might, it might run for, um, you know, it gets those 3D printers work by putting layer on top of layer on top of layer on top of layer. It's very cool to watch. Um, but after it's printed, 
You then take it out off the platform and you have to put it through a wash system. So it's an alcohol wash. You put it in a little machine and it goes around for, it gets washed maybe for 45 minutes or an hour inside the machine. And then it gets cured in a little oven. So print, washed, cured, that takes a little bit of time, but no one has to babysit it. Um, you could just put it in and go, both of those things. And then once it comes out of there, you're cutting the, you're, you're just like, like kind of breaking those supports off and doing a little polishing. So how much time are you spending with it? Design, 10, 15 minutes, preform, five minutes, and then it's, it's going from one thing to the next to the next without much of your time involved at all your assistants moving it over to those things. And then my assistants polish them for me because they're really simple to polish. Um, and they come out pretty close to where you need them to be. They have those little nubs from the supports on them and you just have to run a wheel over them. So they're maybe spending five minutes tops polishing it. And then you're then autoclave, right? Because you're delivering it to somebody and we've got our fingers all over it. The one thing I'd also say is it, uh, it all depends on how many units you have. So if you do one 45 minutes, to an hour and 15. So the more you do, the less time you have labor for them. But the the, the fantastic thing about 3D printing or just additive manufacture is the, the there's no waste. So if you use one, it's gonna be the same amount of material usage as two. So you're not like a puck, you're not milling. The only thing that you're wasting is, uh, is a touch and a labor because that same person that's only touching it multiple times is doing that whether it's one or seven, uh, you're producing them. So that's the only labor difference that you would have. But the actual material usage um, is really just going to be dependent on, on piece by piece because you're not having any waste because it is uh, additive manufacturing. That's a really good point, Phil, um, that you aren't wasting material. And you know, dentists are really concerned about that, you know, because consumables are such a huge expense for us. And um, it, it does feel good to know that, um, you know, that the way that works is the printer has a big kind of reservoir of the material you're using. And um, that, how long does it, what's the shelf life of that? So shelf life in the bottle is two years, but once it's dispensed into the tray, you have three months to use what's dispensed in there. So if you're using it on a weekly basis and you're adding more, it's auto, automatically dispensed into that tank, um, you're gonna be able to use, you're gonna be able to get hundreds and hundreds of uh, splints out of a single tray and that resin will just be continually be reused. But if it even said, if you went on a, a fantastic holiday for three months to the South of France, which we all want to go to after this is all over, uh, you still probably would be able to print on it when you got back from the extended vacation. That, that's awesome. really important. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Uh, next question is a multi-part question. So one, are you currently conducting any one visit appointments? If so, how does that appointment look and how are those scheduled? Like for milling, I'm guessing they're asking a one visit appointment. Yeah, I think so. And if the person that asked it wants to clarify, we'll get some clarification in there, but yes, yeah, they did say. Okay, let's talk about milling. So we do a lot of one visit mills now. Um, so um, we've always had a slower practice. Um, meaning that I see a, a lot of pa I, I see fewer patients longer periods of time. So that's been the way we've worked for a long time. But because of COVID, it's even more important because we don't want to turn those rooms over. Every time you turn the room over, you're turning over all your PPE and um, all your disposables. And patients don't want to come multiple times. They just want to come once and get it all over with. So how that works for us is um, I'm prepping and scanning. We leave the patient in the chair. Um, we have set up, we, we tell them they're going to have about 45 minutes to themselves um, in the room. So, you know, they're on their phones. Lots of them are shopping on their phones, but I also have people working. So they're bringing their laptops from work and we have a, a kind of a desk set up in two of our rooms so they can, you know, we can finish what we're doing. They can sit at the desk and work and we're off milling while they're, while they're sitting there. And I'm off in the next room usually. My associate does, my partner associate does almost all of our same day milling and um, we, we, we tell those patients and they're bringing work with them basically. And she works out of two chairs and mostly when I'm not there because I am at home busy planning my three month trip to the south of France. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> um, next question. What is the training process for your team on the iTero? 
on the iTero. So I remember very well when we first got the iTero, um, we had a Zoom that, you know, we put up a camera, um, a webcam on the iTero. We had everybody come in. We had one person sit in the chair. Everybody listened to the webinar or to the trainer and one person scanned. We spent about two hours and got one person to scan and um, it feels awkward. It feels clunky. Um, it feels like um, it's hard to it's hard to keep the scanner on the teeth when you're looking at the screen because we're not used to doing that. You're, you're kind of like floating all over the mouth and um, it takes forever to scan the first time, but we committed to everybody doing that scanning once a week. We had Wednesday afternoons were scanning days. We all practiced on each other and it only took about, I would say four weeks till everybody was pretty good at scanning. Awesome. Excellent. It looks like there's another question in the chat. Um, doctor, what are you currently 3D printing? And I would take this one step further and ask, you know, what does your future of 3D printing look like in your office? Yeah. So currently, we print occlusal guards and we print, print surgical stents. Um, we print models also, just models for regular use, sometimes for, um, you know, for retainers and um, but where I'm most excited about moving forward is through smile design for me. So I'm going to, uh, we do the scan, we'll be able to do the smile design, we'll be able to fabricate a model from the prototype of the smile design. And from that, um, I can make provisionals and I can make prep guides from that. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Dr. McMahon. We don't have any other questions in the chat at this time. So I'm going to pass it over to Chris to see if he has, he has any final thoughts for us. All right. Well, thank you, Reagan. And I'd like to thank Dr. McMahon for um, presenting tonight. Also, a thank you to Align, Itero, uh, and Form Labs. And if you do have any questions on anything you've seen tonight, uh, whether it be the TS 150E, the Itero Element or the Form Labs printer, please feel free to reach out to your friendly local Benco rep. We're more than happy to help. Um, and please keep an eye on your email inbox for a special offer associated with this webinar tonight. But again, thank you, Dr. McMahon. Everything was wonderful and have a great Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah, good night, everybody. I look forward to hearing from you. <laughs>